Okay, so this is the video in Unit 4 that's going to be focusing on redox equations, redox reactions. And so as we look here, we've already really identified how to classify chemical reactions according to the five main categories, but now we're going to be getting them a little bit more in depth. And so we're going to recognize them not only are they synthesis, decomposition, combustion, single or double replacement, but we're also going to talk about what can it happen to a reaction in aqueous solution. And so the first one, the one that this video deals with, is redox or oxidation reduction reactions. And so in order to identify whether it's a redox reaction, you have to be able to figure out the oxidation number. Now for us, we're going to do that for atoms and compounds and I'll show you how I do that. Then we're going to look at reducing agent, oxidizing agent, uh, what's being oxidized, what's being reduced, and that kind of thing. So here we are really only going to be focusing right there. So we're going to be dealing with redox reactions and how do you identify them, how do you know, and then really talking about the details of those reactions. So redox reactions happen when you have a change of oxidation state. And what that really means is you've got a transfer of electrons. Uh, these are, in all honesty, the most expensive reactions, period. These are the reactions that, ha that are oxidizing the bridges and buildings to make them unsafe. These are the reactions that are causing erosion of you know, architecture. It's the reactions that are allowing us to charge our cell phones and other devices. These are important reactions and that's probably why I just decided to give it its own video. It's important. Now these are usually, but not always, synthesis or single replacement reactions. So let's look here. If we're going to look at identifying them, the first thing we need to do is talk about what does it mean to be oxidized or reduced. And that is what I have here. So oxidation is a loss of electrons. That is going to correspond to an increase in oxidation number. Or alternatively, if it's not a loss of electrons, you might get more bonds to oxygen. Reduction, on the other hand, is gaining electrons. You're gaining that negative, so you're gaining a reduced sign. That's going to give us a decrease in oxidation number, and it's going to possibly, if it's not gaining electrons, it might be reducing the number of bonds to oxygen. Okay. Now, the way that I remember this is one of these two things. It depends on which one you like, but choose one. So oil rig this really just means that oxidation is losing electrons. Reduction is gaining electrons. So OIL, oil, RIG, oil rig. Oxidation is losing electrons. Reduction is gaining electrons. Same thing here. Uh, Leo Gurr, this just says losing electrons is oxidation. Gaining electrons is reduction. Okay? So that's one way of viewing it. We also need to consider what is happening here. And so we talk about something as being oxidized, something as being reduced, but we also have to consider how that is affecting the reaction itself. And we do that with our agents. So an oxidizing agent is the substance, specifically the reactant, guys, it has to be the thing on the left, that is being reduced in the chemical reaction. By being reduced, by gaining electrons, it is taking electrons from something else and causing that thing to be oxidized. So the reactant that is reduced is our oxidizing agent because it's causing the oxidation of somebody else. The reducing agent is the reactant, again this is on the left, that is oxidized in the chemical reaction. 
Same thing here, it's being oxidized. So it is giving up electrons. Well, because those electrons can't just be destroyed, they have to go to somebody. If you're being oxidized, you're forcing someone else to be reduced. And so here, whatever reactant is being oxidized is the reducing agent. Now, in terms of identifying oxidation numbers, there's a few different rules here. And this looks like a lot, but it's going to be nicer than you think. The oxidation number of any element in its native state is zero. So if it's a Hofbrinkle like hydrogen, it's zero. If it's sodium, it's zero. If it is chlorine, Cl2, it is zero. Manganese, it is zero. Native state. The oxidation number of oxygen in any compound is minus two. Unless it's a peroxide, which I really try not to use, and then it would be minus one. But magnesium carbonate, oxygen has an oxidation number of minus two. Um, what else is there? Oh, sulfuric acid, minus two. The only exception is if oxygen is in its native state, like O2, then it's going to be zero, or if it's in a peroxide. The oxidation number of hydrogen is going to be plus one, unless it's in a metal hydride. So if it's um, HCl, H is plus one. HNO3, plus one. If it's something like sodium hydride, which we really don't deal with, that's when it would be minus one. Now, for most, for the most part, elements in compounds are going to have the same oxidation state as what they would have if they formed a charge. However, exceptions are like row three and down and column five and to the right. So like phosphorus, sulfur, those things. Um, the other things are transition metals. These can be multiple things because they can have multiple charges. So when we're doing this, we're going to solve for row three and down, row five and over, or a transition metal. So the sum of oxidation numbers for everything in a co compound, a neutral compound, must add up to be zero. If it's not a neutral compound, it's going to add up to be equal to the charge. So let's look at this really quick. Here's how it would look. Are these redox reactions, and if so, what's being oxidized, what's being reduced, what's the oxidizing agent, what's the reducing agent? So let's go ahead and just identify this first by main category. And I'm only going to be dealing with the top. Sodium reacts with chlorine to produce sodium chloride. Two things on the left, one thing on the right. So this is synthesis. Now, we haven't talked about the other types of reactions yet, but I don't see an acid, so it can't be acid base. I don't see a gas, so it can't be gas evolving. There's a reason why it's not precipitation, but you don't know that yet, so it's not precipitation. So let's find out if it's redox. So here we've got sodium chlorine and then sodium chloride. So sodium is in its native state, so its oxidation state number is zero. Chlorine, this is a Hofbrinkle, it wants to be diatomic, so its oxidation state is zero. Sodium and chlorine, even though you probably know this, I'm going to make a table. I make tables over everything. So here we're going to have atom, number, oxidation state, and total. We have sodium and chlorine, and this is a neutral compound, so the total has to add up to be zero. We have one and one. Sodium is not an exception, which means in a compound like this, it has to be um, plus one. Hmm. It's not a charge, the plus should come first. So that gives us a total positive so far of plus one. Chlorine is row three and down and row five and over, so we would have to solve for this. 
but to make this cancel plus one to get to a zero we have to have minus one. So the oxidation state here has to be minus one. So this is going to be plus one minus one. Okay. Now just for the moment let's just talk about this. Na goes from zero on the left to plus one. Chlorine, and I'm talking about the element here, goes from zero to minus one. There is a change in redox number here. So this is a redox reaction. So if we were to fully characterize this, it would be synthesis and redox. Now let's talk about what those changes mean. I usually start with what's going down just because I think it sounds better. So I'm going to look for what's being reduced. Zero to minus one, this is going down. And if you were in my classroom right now, we would totally be doing interpretive dance about reducing. And so this is reducing. And actually, I'm going to rewrite this. So chlorine is reduced in the reaction which means the reactant that contains chlorine, Cl2, if chlorine, the element, is being reduced, this reactant must be our oxidizing agent. There we go. So chlorine, the element, is reduced. The reactant is our agent. Now sodium goes from zero to plus one. This is going up. So an increase in oxidation number means that sodium is oxidized in this, which means the uh, reactant here it would be sodium or sodium solid. If it's being oxidized, it's got to be our reducing agent. And guys, this is how I write it even when I take your practice exam because I'm really afraid of messing it up. The opposites are terrible here. So let's do the next one. Down here we have potassium chlorate going to potassium chloride and oxygen. Now let's fully characterize this. This has one reactant, two products. So this is synthesis. Oh, I'm sorry, no it's not. Wow, I was sorry. I was reading, trying to glance at my notes to see if there was something special I needed to say. So one going to two, this is decomposition. Now, we haven't talked about the other types of reactions yet, but let's just go through it. I don't see an acid or a base, so it can't be acid-based. Um, I know you don't know this yet, but I can tell you it's not precipitation. There is oxygen here, so this is a gas evolving reaction. Let's see if it's also redox, and the way we do that is by looking at oxidation numbers, okay? So here, um, hmm, I'm going to do it up here. Atom, number, oxidation state, and total. Let's do it for K, C, L, and O. One, one, three. Total has to add up to be zero. K is not an exception. It's you know it's going to form the same as what it does with the um, with its charge. So this is plus one. Oxygen in a compound is always minus two. So three times minus two is minus six. K times one times plus one is plus one. The only way to get this to equal zero is to have plus five. Plus five divided by one plus five. So here this is plus one, plus five and minus two. Atom, number, oxidation state, and total, K and Cl, one and one. This is not an exception, so it's going to be plus one. Only way to get it to equal zero is to have a minus one. So this is, no, 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 no. So this is plus one and minus one. Oxygen in its native state, zero. So I typically like to write this out, okay? I don't like to just kind of view it this way. I like to have it nice linear. K is plus one on the left, goes to plus one on the right. It's not part of, it, it, it didn't change. But I'm going to keep going. Chlorine goes from 
plus 5. On the left, 2 minus 1 on the right. Oxygen goes from minus 2 on the left to 0 on the right. So we know chlorine, the element, is reduced, which means that KClO3, the, ele the reactant that contains chlorine, is our oxidizing agent. I don't know why that keeps happening. What am I touching? Oxygen goes from minus 2 to 0, so this is being oxidized. It's going up, okay? So oxygen, oxygen ha ha ha, is being oxidized, which means the reactant containing oxygen, KClO3, is our reducing agent. That can happen. I mean, we've got two KClO3s here. One can be causing the oxidation, one can be causing the reduction, it happens. Um, and so that, that works. The big thing is the element is reduced, the reactant is the agent. The element is oxidized, the reactant is the reducing agent. Now we do have changes, plus five to minus one, minus two to zero, so this is a redox reaction. So if we were to fully characterize this in your, your homework, it's decomposition, gas evolving, and redox. You need all three there. So is the following redox reaction. Guys, at this point, please pause and really try to do this on your own just because it's, it's good practice. It's how you're going to know. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. I know my elements in their native state are zero. So I really only have to solve for these compounds right here. Silver nitrate, copper nitrate. So I'm going to go ahead with atom, number, oxidation state, and total, AG. You can do NO3 um, separately where you have nitrogen and oxygen. Because it's going to be um, an ion, I know that these have to add up to be minus 1. So there's 1 and 1. These have to add up to be minus 1. So to add up to be zero, this has to be a plus one, plus one. And nitrates on both sides, it can't go through a change. Um, if we were to do the same thing with copper nitrate, here we've got copper, there's two, I'm, I'm sorry, no there's not, there's one copper, two nitrates. Each one of the nitrates has to have oxidation states that add up to be minus one, two times minus one is minus two means this has to be plus 2 and plus 2. So plus 2, nitrate is still going to be minus 1. So here we have copper going from 0 to plus 2, and silver from plus 1 to 0. So if we look at this, this is definitely a redox reaction because we have changes in oxidation state here. Now. I like to start with what's being reduced. Silver is reduced, which means that the silver nitrate reactant containing silver is our oxidizing agent. Copper is being oxidized. It's going from 2 up to plus 2, which means copper solid, the reactant containing copper, is our reducing agent. Okay. So now going through this, guys, if I were to look, element, compound, compound, element, this is a single replacement reaction or single displacement, either way. Hmm. It is not gas evolving. I don't see a gas. It's not acid based because I don't see an acid or a base. It's not precipitation um, because it's not a compound that's falling out, but it is redox. So to fully characterize this, it's a single replacement reaction that is also a redox reaction. Same thing here. Um, just good practice, go ahead and hit pause and try this on your own. I'm going to assume you have done that. And elements in their native state are zero. Hydrogen in a compound is plus one. Oxygen in a compound is minus two. Magnesium 
oxygen, hydrogen, 1, 2, 2, minus 2, plus 1, gives us a total of 2 t plus 2, 2 times minus 2 is minus 4, so this has to be plus 2 and plus 2, which makes sense because magnesium should form an ion with a plus 2 charge, okay? So for space reasons, I'm only going to write what's changing. We have magnesium going from 0 to plus 2, and hydrogen going from here to plus 1 all the way to 0 on this side. Now I know some of it is plus 1, but it doesn't matter. We're only looking at what's changing. So here, this is a redox reaction. It is also a gas evolving because there's hydrogen. See that gas right here? Um, I don't see a precipitation. I don't see an acid. Even though I see a base over here, I don't see acid and a base. So let's look at this. This is an element, compound, compound and element. So again, this is a single replacement reaction. So that's fully characterizing. Now here, magnesium is going from 0 to plus 2. Hydrogen is plus 1 down to 0. So hydrogen, the element, is reduced. I don't know what I am touching to make that happen. So water, the element containing, I mean the, the reactant containing hydrogen, is our oxidizing agent. Magnesium is being oxidized. So magnesium solid, the reactant containing magnesium, is our reducing agent. All right, silver nitrate reacting with sodium chloride to produce silver chloride and sodium nitrate. Um, these are the same. Here, this has to add up to be minus 1, so this has to be plus 1. This has to be add, add up to be minus 1, so this is plus 1. In a compound, this is going to be plus 1, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1. So if you make your tables, that's fine, but I'm assuming you do that and you can see, oh, silver is plus 1, nitrate didn't change, sodium didn't change. This is not redox. It is a double replacement reaction. Compound, 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 compound. And even though we haven't talked about it, it is a precipitation reaction. So that'll be in the next video. Okay, so the last thing I need to talk to you about with redox reactions is balancing them. Now, this seems kind of uh, kind of interesting, but but it's kind of fun to do, especially when you are dealing with things like batteries and. Um, it's really not as bad as what it sounds like. So for these, we're going to write the half reactions, meaning we're going to write the reactant and product that has the same element. Then we are going to balance everything except oxygen and hydrogen. If the oxygen atoms aren't balanced, we're going to add water to balance oxygen. We're going to add H plus to the side that needs hydrogen. We're going to balance our charges by adding electrons to the more positive side. And we're going to multiply to make sure that the same number of reactions are, uh, the same number of electrons are being used. You can't have two being gained but four lost. You have to have the same number or it violates the law of conservation of mass matter. Um, and then you're going to add the equations and cancel out anything that's the same on both sides. So let's try one. Here we've got dichromate and nitrite going to chromium-3 and nitrogen. So to write the half reactions, I kind of look for the things that have the same elements, okay? So I'm going to now rewrite those. Mm, I'm, I like to line these up. So I'm going to do dichromate going to CR3+, plus. and then down here I'm going to do nitrite. 
notice the charges have to be here, guys, going to nitrate. Okay, so let's first balance the, the elements other than oxygen and hydrogen. Chromium I have two. I need to have two, so I'm going to add a two. Nitrogen I have one and one, so I'm okay there. Now guys, I would still make my table. I just don't have room for that, where I would say CR and O and that kind of thing. Um, actually, maybe I can. We'll do it like that. And so we have two, now we have two, seven, and none of those yet. Nitrite, going to nitrate. Here we have nitrogen and oxygen, one and one, two and three. So now we need to balance those oxygens. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add water. So I have seven over here, so I'm going to add seven waters over here. Two and three, so now I have 14 over here. Two and three, I, have, I need to add a water over here so that now I have three. In terms of hydrogen, now I have two there, so we'll deal with that. Okay, so after oxygen, we need to add H plus until we have equal hydrogens. 14 hydrogens on this side, so I'm going to add 14 H pluses over here. Down here I have two, so I'm going to add two H pluses over here. Now we need to look at the charges. This is probably the hardest part of all of this. Here I've got two chromium threes. Two times plus three gives us plus six. Here I've got plus 14. 14 times one is 14. And then a minus two. So I have plus 12 overall. Plus 12 plus six, that's not gonna work. We need to have these be equal. So we're gonna add six electrons here Minus 6 gives plus 6. Plus 6 is now going to be equal on both sides. You want to have the same charge on both sides, otherwise you have created or reduced something that it, it's just not possible. Now in terms of down here, I have a nitrate, nitrite with a minus 1. Over here I have a nitrate with minus 1 and two pluses, so plus one. Minus one plus two gives plus one. So same thing, minus one plus one. It's not going to work. To make these equal, I'm going to add two negatives, so two electrons. Minus two gives us minus one. So now minus one, minus one charges are on both sides. So we have an equal charge distribution, which is really good. So yay yes, okay? So let's look at these. At this point, if I were on a new piece of paper, I would actually write a line and continue. Um, because of how this is written, it's kind of hard to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do some erasing and just move things closer together. Um, but I want to show you why first. So up here, I have electrons. And down here, I have electrons. But I have three, I'm sorry, no, I have six, and I have two. I can't gain six electrons if something only gave up two. That does, that's, not, that's not how it works. I mean, I'd really like to gain a thousand dollars when, you know, I don't know, I get paid a, from somebody a hundred. It's just, it's not how it works. It has to be equal. And so we need to multiply this to make sure that those two reactions are the same. And so I'm actually going to go up here, guys, with this, just so that um, you can follow it a little bit better. So I'm going to rewrite this top reaction exactly how it is. Six electrons plus 14 H pluses plus Cr2O7 reacting to produce 2, two Cr3 pluses plus 
seven H2Os. Then for this reaction, I need to get six electrons. The, I have to multiply this whole thing by three to make sure three times two will give us six. But you can't just multiply the electrons, you have to multiply everything. So that's going to give us three waters plus three nitrites reacting to produce three nitrates plus six H pluses plus six electrons. Now at this point we can sum these together to get the overall reaction. And this is going to be long, but we'll do it. Six electrons plus 14 H pluses plus Cr2O7, two minus, plus three waters, plus three nitrites, nitrate, yeah, nitrites, going to two Cr3 pluses, plus seven waters, plus three nitrates, plus six H pluses, plus six electrons. Now guys, that doesn't really make any sense. Why do we have H pluses on both sides? So what you're going to do is you're going to cancel something that's on the left and on the right. So see these six electrons? It's It doesn't matter. Um, I mean technically it's kind of like how you get paid by your employer uh, and then taxes come out. You never see that tax. It's it's it, it's a net change that does not have anything to do with what you see. In terms of H pluses, I have six over here, which means I can cancel six and end up with eight. Fourteen minus six is eight. Waters, I have three waters, so that is going to be seven minus three is four. And I think that's good. So our overall reaction is going to be eight H pluses plus Cr two O seven two minus plus three nitrites reacts to produce two Cr three pluses plus four waters plus three nitrates. And this is our balanced equation, which I just think is fun. It is long. It is kind of scary. Play around with it. Do the practice. Try it. And if nothing else, guys, it's only going to be one problem because it's only mentioned one time. Um, and in fact, if you go to... Keep. If you go to the learning outcomes, there's nothing about balancing redox equations here. So it really shouldn't be on the exam. It could be in your homework because it is important for dealing with redox later on, but it's probably not going to be on the exam because it's not going to be in your review. Okay, oops. Oh well, whatever. So let's go down to our last one here. So here we've got another redox reaction. We're going to go ahead and split it into our half reactions. The two things that contain carbon, the two things that contain manganese. So that's going to give us methanoic acid reacting to produce carbon dioxide and permanganate going to MN2+. So now to balance our oxygens, or balance our carbons, one and one, manganese one and one, car, uh, oxygens, uh, two and two, four, so I need four over here, Now we're going to balance hydrogens. To do that, we need to add H plus. We need two of them here, one, two. Here we've got four times two is eight, so eight H plus is here. I think that's it. So let's go ahead and look at our charges here. 
uh, 0, 0 plus 2. We want it to be 0, so we're going to add 2 electrons. That's the same color I've already got. 2 minus 2 is 0, so now I have 0 on both sides here. Over here I have plus 2. Over here I have 8. Minus 1 is 7. So to get 7 down to 2, I'm going to add 5 electrons. Now, 5 and 2 is not the same. So we are going to rewrite this, where I multiply everything up here by 5 and everything down here by 2. That's the only way to get to the lowest common denominator, the same number of electrons. So that is going to give us 5 of these reacting to produce 5 CO2s and 10 H pluses and 10 electrons. Down here we're going to have 10 electrons plus 16 H pluses plus 2 MnO4s with a negative charge. Then we're going to have 10 CO2s. I'm sorry, no, no, wrong, wrong line. Manganese, 2 times that is 2 Mn2 pluses, plus 2 times 4 is 8 H2Os. 5, 16, 2, 2, 8. Good, okay. So at that point we have 10 electrons on both sides, we can start to count them up. Now in the last slide I actually rewrote all of it, but there's an easier way to do it and that's by just looking at what's on the, the same on the left and right. So like we can see that there's 10 electrons, we can just cross those off. We don't have to rewrite it to do that. Now H pluses, there's 10 here, which means we can cancel out the 10 here where 16 minus 10 is left with 6. And I think that's all we can do. So we're going to end up with 5HCOOH plus 6H pluses plus 2MnO4 negatives going to 5CO2s plus 2Mn2 pluses plus 8 waters. And that's our balanced equation. Now same thing here guys, like if you look at your homework, these tend to be much shorter problems than what um, I just did. It's not meant to be overly scary, it's meant to kind of get you comfortable with manipulating equations, which is going to come around a little bit later. Um, but if this is something that you struggle with, try not to fret about it. It's a minor thing. I can give you more practice. We can do a tutoring session. It's totally fine. Um, and if nothing else, it's only going to be on your homework. It's not going to be on your exam. Okay? So as you deal with redox, really focus on oxidizing, reducing, and your agents here because that is something that you will continue to see um, on the exam, in your homework, and even later. Okay?